I'm telling you guys, Saturday had to be one of the craziest college football days I've ever seen in the past couple of years. I mean, you could not ask for more drama, more close games, more upsets than you got on Saturday to cap the final big regular season Saturday of the season. I mean, I'm looking down here at the games. And, you know, Ohio State, Michigan, please, 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 dear Lord, let Michigan State beat Ohio State next week because the Buckeyes are not that good and we do not want to see Ohio State playing possibly Florida State for the national championship game. Oh my God, would that be a bad game. The Buckeyes are not that good. I don't care that it was a big rivalry game with Michigan and the Wolverines got up for the game, yada, yada, yada. The Wolverines aren't that good. And Ohio State was lucky to win the game by one point. And you keep going down the card yesterday. You know, you look at Duke and you know, people keep downing Duke. I mean, the Blue Devils seemingly still get it done. Yesterday, a five-point dog at North Carolina. I mean, a North Carolina team that didn't play much defense all season long, a North Carolina team that catches fire late in the season, and suddenly the Tar Heels, because they're playing in Chapel Hill, they're the five-point favorite yesterday. Naturally, Duke wins the game outright. And then you have West Virginia against Iowa State. Okay, you have West Virginia up in that game, and then Iowa State comes back and wins it in double overtime. I mean, one of the biggest shockers of yesterday's card, and I'm not even talking Auburn, Alabama, but you tell me how Penn State goes to Wisconsin and kicks the Badgers' ass. I mean, they totally dominated that game. Just another good, good win for an underrated uh, Bill O'Brien team, coach team. And I'll tell you what, it's just amazing what that team has done. Rising from the ashes, really, with all the off-field controversy, with the scholarship limits, with players having the availability to transfer. What this guy has done since being brought to uh, Happy Valley to take over the Penn State program uh, a couple of years years ago. But that wasn't all. I mean, you keep running down the uh, the scoreboard and you go, Connecticut, what, they lost their first nine games of the season and then suddenly they won their final two? And Rutgers? <laughs> I mean, Rutgers, you start the season by winning four out of five and then you have that, well, hey, was that coach bullying or hazing a particular player? You know, you got the off-field controversies. You got a team that just totally fell apart uh, in terms of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights and that one. Um, another game yesterday, my alma mater, Temple. I mean, game after game after game, they're blowing fourth quarter leads, okay? Last week, they're up 21 nothing at home against UConn and lose the game 28-21. So naturally, they go on the road. They're at Memphis. Memphis is the big, what, eight, nine point favorite in that game. And Temple wins the game outright by 20 points. Go figure. You got Southern Mississippi. <laughs> I mean, this game blows my mind. Southern Mississippi hasn't won a game all season long. So they go to UAB and they won 62 to 27. They won 62 to 27 as a 14 and a half point underdog. Again, it was a crazy, crazy day yesterday. And of course, then we have the games that, well, you've all seen the Alabama Auburn finish. I mean, is Auburn charmed or what? The Georgia finish, that finish. Well, now let's see what happens with Auburn against Miss, uh, Missouri next week. I mean, you know, they say good and bad things go in runs of three. Well, will it be a third straight uh, lucky charm day for Auburn in the SEC title game? Strange, strange day. Baylor, as expected, you know, had to, you had to expect uh, Baylor to have the letdown after watching its undefeated season go down in flames by getting dominated by Oklahoma State. But the Bears jumped out, you know, took a pretty good size lead against TCU. But then I'm watching that game the entire fourth quarter, and I'm going, it's still 41-38? I'm, I'm checking the scoreboard at the site here on our site on my mobile phone, and I'm going, it's still 41-38? What's going on in the fourth quarter? Did they stop the game? And it ends 41-38. So, you know, it was an interesting day. All I know is that I cashed in again. I picked a big favorite on the board, Colorado State. I looked at that team. They had lost seven straight games to Air Force, and I thought they are going to kick the Falcons' ass yesterday, and that's exactly what happened. Colorado State coming up with the easy win in that one. Uh, hit two of the three free picks, lost with Alabama, did give you Arizona State, also gave you Hawaii as the Warriors, or excuse me, the Rainbows. No, hold it, is it the Rainbow? Yeah, it's the Rainbows now, right. The Rainbows, uh, a six-and-a-half-point favorite, hold on for the seven-point win against Army to win their first game of the season as well to cap a uh, very exciting card. Hey guys, Adam Marco here. This, of course, if you haven't figured out by now, is your Sunday video report. And let's get busy with who's hot and who's not. 
And guess what? Shawn Michaels, mm -hmm. he won again. I mean, it's like a broken record, but Jesus, what a run he is on. Yesterday, 100 time Pac-12 lock of the year. Yeah, you got it. Arizona State just crushing Arizona. So much for the road team uh, on like a 16-4-1 ATS run in that series, or was it the dog? It didn't matter either way. Arizona State absolutely kicked their ass last night. Today, he's going for winning day number 64 out of 94 with his 109 AFC South game of the year on Tennessee and Indianapolis. He is 14-2-1. With 100 dime max wager releases over the past three weeks, 14 2 and 1. In reality, it's really 15 and 2. Uh, but he counted a game that we were both on the Saints a couple of Sundays ago against San Francisco as a push, although we both personally won, and I think probably 99% of you out there did as well. But hey, whether it's 14 2 and 1 or 15 and 2, does it really matter when you have that type of three week run? And today, of course, another 100 dimer in the NFL where he is 41 and 17 with NFL 100 dime releases over the past four plus seasons, including his Thanksgiving Day teaser winner on Dallas and Detroit that you got. He is now 9 and 1 this college football season with 100 dime side plays after cashing with Arizona State last night. And of course, on Friday, you got his 100 dime college. Uh, total of the year winner, part number two, uh, with SMU and Houston staying under the total for 29 points. Guys, it is a broken record, but the fact remains that this guy has been the winningest handicapper at the site, bar none, over the past six months. Because over the past six months, he has had a total of 95 plays. And he has 63 wins, 30 losses, and two pushes with those 95 plays, making a $10 better a little over 22 thousand dollars so that's what he's got going today uh, as for me i mentioned that i had colorado state yesterday uh today i've got a play that is three times uh, stronger it is going to be my uh, cheap chalk game of the year in the nfl and let me tell you something it is a difficult nfl card and i've got a couple of free selections coming up for you in just a moment but it's a tough nfl card here today there are not a lot of games other than this one that are just jumping off the card and screaming bet me bet me bet me for everything you're worth um but this play is going to be a 15 dime release it's not as sexy sounding as the 100 dimers that sean is releasing but the fact is 99 percent of my plays are rated between 5 and 15 dimes i have a very narrow rating scale so this is right there at the top of the heap. Just hit my 15 dime Monday night game of the year with San Francisco and the easy road route of Washington. I am 9-3-2 with 15 dime releases in the NFL so far this season. Really personally 11-3. and three. Again, going back to the Saints game against the 49ers and earlier game in Monday night action back in September, Denver and Oakland. Personally won them both. I think most of you did, but I counted on those pushes because I don't really care. Uh, bottom line is uh, also shooting for winning day number 11 out of 14 with football winner number 9 of 11. And that, again, is my cheap chalk game of the year. Uh, FYI, guys, if you want to save today $22 off a single purchase of anything at the site, doesn't have to be my place, can be Sean's place, can be anybody's place, it doesn't matter. Uh, use coupon code SAVE22, S-A-V-E, and the number 22, that'll save you 22 bucks off a single purchase. Let's talk about a couple of other handicappers here. Uh, quick congratulations going out to Brad Wilton. Uh, yesterday, uh, you got his uh, Big Ten total of the year with Minnesota and Michigan State only staying under by 24 points, and you got the winner for just $14.95. I think that was the fourth consecutive 60-dime total winner. You got it at a discounted price over the past two weeks, and today he's got 75-dime winner, number five out of six on Tampa Bay and Carolina. $10 better has won $10,000 and $10 since July following his advice. He is number two at the site going back the past few months behind Shawn Michaels. So, I mean, you got two red hot guys there. Um, listen, want to talk about Brett Atkins here quickly. Uh, biggest NFL release of the season going today. Now, yesterday, as Saturday's $5 play of the day, you got his second biggest football play of the season. His 75 dime Mountain West total of the year was San Diego State and UNLV going over the total, and you got that for just five dollars well today he has a play that is even stronger his 100 dime nfl winner number four out of five it's his blowout total of the year he says that this is going to be the highest scoring game on the card 100 dime winner number four out of five you can save eighty dollars on the purchase of that play simply by using coupon code 
Brett 80, B-R-E-T-T, -T, and the number 80. Uh, stronger than the 75-time winner last night. Uh, a couple of Sundays ago, he had a 100-dime total winner with Seattle and Minnesota over. The Sunday before that, he had a 100-dime total winner with the Ravens and Bengals under. Uh, five Sundays ago, he had the Redskins and Broncos over. That was a 100-dime total winner. Um, you've gotten them all for discounted prices, and you can get today's as well. And then finally, the $5 play of the day is Jeff Fenton, 75-dime winner, number 22 out of 32. His NFC West total of the year on the late card, the Rams 49ers over under. Uh, let's see, his last 75-dime NFL winner was the Falcons cover against the Saints a couple of Thursdays ago. 75-dime uh, winner on the Buccaneers over Atlanta recently. 75-dime winner a couple of Thursdays ago with the Colts covering at Tennessee because he bought down the half price. Uh, half point, excuse me, 21-10-1 run with 75-dime releases over the past six, seven months. And you've gotten uh, 20 of those picks as $5 play of the day releases. And you're going to get today's as a $5 play simply by using coupon code Jeff. Five, Jeff Five. I tell you the good, I gotta tell you the bad. Scott Delaney yesterday had been 3 0 with 100 dime football releases this season, 2 0 in the pros, 1 0 in college, had his college 100 dimer last night, and loses with San Diego State as UNLV gets the outright win. And wow, what? There's another crazy game. I mean, beginning of the season, everybody thought UNLV's coach was as good as gone, and the way they started the season, you would have thought that would be the case. Here they're probably going to go bowling. I mean, they had a great season by UNLV standards. I mean, they ain't Florida State. You know what I mean? Strange, strange day. Okay, let's get to your free selections. And let me just double check. I got to look at my own record here on the website. Let me just look at my... You think I remember all these numbers verbatim? Uh, I've won 20 out of 25 football free selections. 20 out of 25. 20 of my last 31 overall. Is that right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, 20 out of 25 football and 20 out of 31 in all sports. Two different length streaks here. Um, like I said, it's a tough game, guys, but the first game I'm going to give you is Indianapolis because Chuck Pagano, I was reading in the Indianapolis story, was quoted as saying, you know, this is the uh, biggest game of the season for the Colts. Yeah, you think so? I mean, Chuck, your team has really sucked the last couple of weeks. What can I tell you? But here's the bottom line. They have covered eight straight games off a straight-up loss. That's good enough reason for me to go with the Colts. No, there's more reasons than that. Hey, they're a three-and-a-half-point favorite in this one. You know, when these two played at Tennessee a couple of Thursdays ago, um, the Colts were trailing 14 nothing early in that game, and then they rallied for the 30-27 to win with another second-half comeback uh, in that particular contest. Um, you know, they're seven and four. They're two games ahead of Tennessee in the AFC South uh, race. Uh, they're currently the number three seed in a weak AFC right now. But they're coming off a 29-point loss at Arizona. Uh, last home game, they got hammered by the Rams by 30 points. I know that their offense is struggling and Andrew Luck is struggling with Reggie Wayne out. But Jesus Christ, you got talent on that team. I mean, now is the time for the Colts to put together one of those stirring wins that they were so well known for a year ago. It's time for the Colts to go back to the game film and go, Jesus, we went to San Francisco and beat the 49ers earlier this season. Jesus, we had Peyton Manning come in with the undefeated Broncos and we kicked his ass too. That's the Indianapolis mindset that this team, which suddenly has just been a shattered team, losing its confidence. They've got to get their mojo back. I just have a feeling that today is one of those days. And that was my second favorite pick on today's card. And I came this close to using it uh, as my cheap chalk game of the year, but it's not. <laughs> but I do like the Colts in this one. Now, the other play on today's card, listen, I always have a problem when I deal with any game involving the Eagles because I'm a lifelong Eagles fan, okay? So, you know, you have to bet with your head and not with your heart. So you can't let emotion be part of the picture. But I'm looking at this Philadelphia game today, and the Eagles are minus three at home against Arizona. And I know Arizona comes in here with a four-game winning streak, but who exactly did they beat during those four consecutive wins in which they allowed an average of, like, uh, 260 yards a game and 15 and a half points a game. Okay, they beat the Falcons. Well, Atlanta threw in the towel how long ago? Uh, they beat the Texans. Need we say more about the Texans? Uh, they beat the Colts. <laughs> uh, I mean, look, they had a little extra uh, oomph in their tanks for that particular game because Bruce Arians, of course, the job he did with Indianapolis last year as the interim coach when Pagano was out with the uh, illness. And they beat Jacksonville on the road. Gee, who hasn't done that? Me, you, and nine other guys can do that, okay? So I realize that Arizona 
has some components that could give Philadelphia's defense some problems, especially when you got Larry Fitzgerald and Michael Floyd, who's finally developing in the second uh, complementary receiver for Carson Palmer uh, against the Philadelphia pass defense that, hmm, let's see, what's the proper word? Oh, it sucks. Okay, you rank 32nd in the league. You don't have much of a pass rush. I think your pass rush is 26th in the league. But here's the deal. The great equalizer in this game is Carson Palmer. I mean, okay, Palmer has played well during the four-game winning streak. I mean, he's completed like 69% of his passes, eight touchdowns, two interceptions. But this is the same guy who had eight touchdowns and I think 13 interceptions in the first seven games of the series. Arizona can't run the ball. Okay, Rashad Mendenhall is going to be the starting running back once again, but the guy who actually leads them in yards per carry, averaging six yards a pop, Andre Ellington, the rookie out of Clemson, he's questionable for the game with a knee injury, okay? And he's got a team leading 441 yards. I think Philadelphia's defense has played much better, and obviously it has shown on the field over the last six or seven weeks. And let's face it, the offense... You know, Nick Foles has done a damn good job. 16 touchdown passes, what, zero interceptions? Um, and I like the fact that deals are coming off a bye here as well. Couldn't happen at a better time, especially for LaShawn McCoy. Although Arizona has a tough run defense, I think it's a paper defense. I think McCoy will be able to have some big gains against it today. And I just think at minus three, Philadelphia is to play. With all that being said, now you realize if Arizona wins 27 to 13, don't blame me. It's a free pick. But anyway, that'll do it for today, guys. Best of luck to y'all. Uh, all the uh, discounts, etc., are over on the homepage. I think I gave you everybody who's hot, who's not, and who has the big plays today. That'll do it. Best of luck, and I will uh, catch you again on Monday when we re-rack and do this once more.